In this Inkscape lesson, we'll learn how to use the offset path effect to create things like borders, and we'll compare it to the offset path operations in the path menu. If we create a path or a shape, we can attach the offset path effect to it by first going up to the path menu and choosing path effects, which will open the path effects dialog. Then we can click the plus button at the bottom of the dialog, then click the icon for offset here. If you're not able to find it, you can click in the search box here at the top and start typing offset and it should pop up. Now we can see that offset is attached to this object. And if we have either a shape tool or the node tool active, we can see this orange circular handle at the top center of the object. If we drag this in, we can inset the object. And if we drag it out, we can outset it. And as you can see, it shows us an outline of the original object, along with the handles or nodes that we can use to modify the shape. Another way to change the offset amount is by using the offset parameter in the path effects dialog. A positive number outsets it, and a negative number insets it. We can also change the type of units that the offset uses. Another thing we can change in here is the appearance of the object's joins. Joins are the points where two segments meet, like the corners of this rectangle. The default join type is miter, which makes the corners sharp. We can also bevel them. and round them. To really see the difference between the join types, however, it's better to have a path with some curves connected by sharp points. I'll go to the pen tool and create a wave-shaped path by clicking here, then clicking and dragging here to create a curve, and I'll create a sharp point here by holding down shift and moving the handle down here, then I'll click here, and click the first point to close off the path. Let's give it a fill color, and we don't really need a stroke, so we can turn it off by holding shift and clicking the red X here. Now let's add the offset path effect to this. Let's switch to the node tool and drag out the offset handle. So as you can see, when our original path has really sharp curves, even though we have the miter join type chosen, some of the corners of the offset might appear beveled. One way to fix this is to increase the miter limit parameter here until all of the corners are sharp. There we go. If we lower the miter limit back down until the corner is beveled again, we can simply check the force miter option here, which will force the corners to be sharpened regardless of the miter limit. Let's turn this back off for now. Another join option we have is miter clip. Unlike the normal miter option, which makes the corners jump from being either completely beveled or completely sharp, miter clip lets us vary the lengths of the corners as we change the miter limit. If we go low enough, the less sharp corners also start to become beveled. At the moment, the corner at the top here looks a bit crooked. To fix this, we have these extrapolated arc options. Now the corner looks smoother. Extrapolated arc also uses the miter limit. If I make this corner even sharper, the first extrapolated arc option might not work correctly, so we have alternative options here that we can try. The final parameter we have in here is this live update checkbox. If we turn this off, as we adjust the offset handle, the offset won't update until we release the handle. When we have the offset the way we want it, we can finalize the path effect by going to path, object to path. This prevents us from accidentally changing the path effect settings later. It also gives us access to all the nodes of the path. One great use of the offset path effect is for giving an object a border. For example, we can first create a shape, then switch to the select tool, duplicate the shape by right clicking it and choosing duplicate, change the color of the duplicate, and click this button up here to put it below the original shape. Now we can add the offset path effect to the duplicate, then switch to the node tool and outset it to give the original shape a border. And we can change the join type if we want. We can also go the other way by selecting the original shape and duplicating it again. Changing the color, adding the offset path effect to it, and using the node tool to inset it. Now with this star, if I duplicate it again, and bring the duplicate over here, I can make a simple border for it by duplicating again, changing the color, sending the duplicate to the back, then only shift the control and scaling it up, which keeps the width to height ratio proportional. However, this only works because all the segments of the star are the same length. This works for things like perfect circles and squares as well. If we try this on something like a rectangle, however, because the sides aren't the same length, scaling while holding shift and control doesn't make for a very nice border. 
Offset, on the other hand, scales all sides by the same amount, so it's much better for creating borders. We can also use the offset path effect on groups of paths or shapes. To demonstrate, I'll create a text object. I'm going to change the font family to something that uses sharp corners, like Arial. I'll also make it bold and increase the font size. Now I'll duplicate the text object, change the color of the duplicate, and send it to the back. At the moment, the duplicate is a text object, so I first need to turn it into a path by going to Path, Object to Path. As we can see in the status bar, this actually gives me a group of paths, and I can apply the offset path effect to the entire group. If I wanted to create multiple offsets, I could simply duplicate this offset path, make it a different color, put it below both of the other objects by switching to the Select tool and clicking this button up here, then switch to the Node tool and offset it. Let's now see how we can use the offset path effect to help with creating two interlocking D shapes. First, let's go to the squares and rectangles tool and create a rectangle. Let's grab this circular handle at the top right and drag it down to round the corners. Now let's create another rectangle covering the whole first two thirds or so of the bottom one. We can click this button up here to sharpen the corners. Now we can go to the select tool and select both of these objects. Then go to path, difference. Okay, next we want to cut a hole out of the center of this path and make the hole the same shape as the shape of the path. We can use offset to help with this. First, let's duplicate this path and make it another color just so we can see it. Then let's set offset to it. Switch to the node tool and inset it. Now we can select both of these and go to path, difference. Next, let's duplicate this path, change the color, Flip it horizontally by pressing the H key, then hold Ctrl and move it over here. Let's go back to the first path and duplicate it again. Let's lower the opacity of it so we'll be able to see everything. 50% should be good. Then let's add Offset to it. Switch to the Node tool and Outset it a bit. When we create an offset for the other path a bit later, we want to use the same amount of offset that we used for this path. So for now, let's press Ctrl C to copy this offset path into the clipboard. We'll see why we did this very soon. But first, we're going to cut this part of the offset path out of the other path. To do this, let's go to the pin tool and draw a path around this area. Now we can switch to the select tool, hold shift and click the offset path to add it to the selection, and go to path, intersection, which leaves us with just this part of the offset path. Now we can hold shift and select the other path here, then go to path, difference. Okay, next we want to give this path the same offset we used for the other path. To do this, we can first duplicate the path and lower the opacity. Then we can simply go to Path, Paste Path Effect. Because we copied the offset path earlier, this adds the offset path effect to the selected path and gives it the same parameters as the path we copied. So now we can cut out the part of the offset we want. Then cut the part out of the other path. If we go up here to the path menu, we actually have four offset path operations in here. Inset, outset, dynamic offset, and linked offset. If we create a shape, the first operation, inset, will inset the object by a small amount. The shortcut for inset is Control plus the 9 key at the top of the keyboard. The next operation, outset, does the opposite of inset. This has the shortcut Control plus the 0 key at the top of the keyboard. And as you can see, when we use Outset on an object with sharp corners, it will make the corners rounded. If we create another shape, the next operation, Dynamic Offset, turns the object into an offset object. Now, like with adding the offset path effect to an object, we get a handle here that we can drag in and out to offset the object. Outsetting with this also rounds the corners. Finally, if we create one more shape, the last operation, Linked Offset, is similar to Dynamic Offset except it will create a duplicate of the original object and use the duplicate as the offset object. It will also link the duplicate to the original. The duplicate is placed below the original, so we can outset it and change the color to see it. And because it's linked to the original object, if we modify the shape of the original object, we'll modify the duplicate as well. 
We can also bring the duplicate to the top by selecting it, then going to the Select tool and clicking this button up here. Then we can inset it. We can also create multiple linked offsets for a single object. Like with the offset path effect, if you go to Path, Object to Path, it will turn the offset object into a normal path. Now modifying the original object won't affect it. I actually use the offset path operations more often than the offset path effect because they're more easily accessible, and as long as I don't care too much about the shape of the corners, they work quite well for creating borders. However, if we want more control over things like the corners and exact offset amounts, the offset path effect is the way to go. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson.